In this video, we're going to look at using MicroStrip uh, as a model for um, signal integrity lines or interconnects. MicroStrip, or the MLIN model, is uh, an accurate dispersive model or distributed model. It's uh, specifically designed to work at gigahertz frequencies, and it does go down to DC. But um, we need to know the limitations of this model. Namely, MLIN itself assumes that we have uh, an infinite or semi-infinite ground plane underneath the MicroStrip line. The purpose of this ground plane is to act as a current return path Whenever we have signals propagating along a line, it's important to understand how the current returns to the voltage source driving that line. There has to be some return path, and if it's not explicit, then it's sometimes very difficult to uh, ascertain the limitations we're seeing in our signal integrity performance uh, because we don't know how the uh, circuit's being completed. Any, any voltage-driven circuit needs that current return path so that we can close the loop on the current flow. Uh, what I'm going to do here is just uh, model a microstrip line on four mils, I'm sorry, five mils of FR4 with a dielectric constant of four. I'm going to use the TX line tool to model this. If you're not familiar with the TX line tool, there's another AWR TV video that you can look at to do this, and we can put in just the uh, information that we need here and fill it out in terms of uh, dielectric constant and physical parameters, and then have it tell us what the electrical dimensions should be. In this case, uh, for a 50 ohm line, we need exactly or roughly 9.27 mils. Um, and I'm going to arbitrarily choose 400 mils of length. Um, to compare this to a highly accurate EM simulation using the Axiom EM solver, I have disabled here, but I, because I've already done it, an extract block that will take an exact copy of the layout portion or the layout rendering of this, which again, because of the AWR unified data model, um, is shown here and is tied directly to that schematic. Um, I'm able to take and directly create the um, this EM document for Axiom. Again, where here's pin 1, here's pin 2, and the assumption is that there's an infinite ground plane feeding this back to uh, our voltage source driving pin 1. If we look at this in terms of model error, uh, here's a bunch of graphs that'll go, or a bunch of measurements I'll go through in a moment here, but here's our uh, MLIN example, um, our microstrip line being compared to the highly accurate Axiom MLIN, and you can see the triangular uh, measurement here that we have a very, very accurate um, uh, simulation of a pretty good model situation here that's giving us, uh, I'll say, somewhere between 60 and 80 dB, so between 6 and 8 orders of magnitude error in terms of least squares agreement between the MLIN model and the highly accurate Axiom EM simulation. Um, but this is, a, of course, assuming that we have an infinite ground plane or very, very large ground plane, which, which may not be the case in a printed circuit board. Oftentimes, we have split planes, or we have finite regions of ground that we're able to use underneath our microstrip line. So let's see what happens as we begin to degrade this assumption that we have a very good uh, ground plane. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make the uh, width of this finite, actually the width and the length. You can see here the, uh, the ground plane uh, has a a width that's, let's say, um, four or five times as wide as the line in each direction. We have a little bit of uh, overshoot in the back and the front here. Um, these straps that you see are actually a hard um, via connections to the ground on the back side, so we can very, very well ground this, um, this ground plane. You can see the microstrip line above it. If we look at our least squares error for that, we have even better agreement than our microstrip model. And this is some of the basis for people saying that the MLIN model isn't very accurate. Uh, because even when we have a, a realistic ground plane, we can do uh, two orders of magnitude better in terms of an EM simulation than we can with the microstrip model. In most cases where we have normal tolerances for the width and the flatness of the board, or the width of the line and the flatness of the board, um, the MLIN model can be sufficient in, in extreme cases where uh, accuracy of the, is the up, of the utmost importance, and MLIN will be found lacking, and we have to go to this sort of simulation here, but in many cases, MLIN sufficient. Uh, just to note, this little jog in the line is because I've traded off for the uh, complete ground plane EM simulation using Axiom. I've traded off speed uh, for um, accuracy, so I have less accuracy in my simulation. It took maybe about 10 seconds to simulate that line on my dual-core laptop. Um, as compared to uh, roughly, let's say, three or four minutes it took for this microstrip line here. So in sacrificing speed for accuracy, I get that little hump there. As we switch back to accuracy, that should go away. So let's look at some of these other ground plane situations that we have. That's for a complete but finite ground plane situation. Let's um, look, and uh, over here, 
I have a, a broken ground plane, uh, sort of a split situation. Over here we have a hard ground, and over here we have, let's say, a power plane that's being uh, grounded to the back side. So I have my microstrip line with two rather finite gaps. Effectively, these big blocks of metal on the layer underneath the microstrip line are going to look like ground, whether it's uh, uh, having DC voltage on it or not, because from an RF perspective, that will look like ground. Um, and so we have uh, two broken lines here. Again, the width is still sufficient so that the sides of our microstrip line see ground for quite a, quite a direction, quite a stretch in either direction. And if we go and look at the uh, measured performance for this, um, our model error again, in the case of our uh, simple broken ground, you can see that uh, it's degraded uh, quite a bit from our Emlin even. We've lost about two orders of magnitude in terms of accuracy. But overall, the behavior is quite uh, Emlin-like. Uh, and to back this up, we can go and look at the match that we get looking into that line. In other words, how much does it look like 50 ohms? And you can see that for the um, simple broken ground plane, we still have a fairly good match. It looks close to 50 ohms. It still behaves like a, a relatively good 50 ohm line. There's no real aberrant behavior in terms of uh, uh, distributed performance over the 400 mils, which is quite a long run of microstrip line. If we look at a more extreme case that I've generated here, the big broken, big broken section. You can see that uh, for all intents and purposes, there's a huge gap here we have where we have no ground plane whatsoever. Uh, and as much as it pains me to say this, I've seen lots of examples in industry where this is the case. People will have uh, Surtees designs that are operating at uh, 10 gigabits, let's say, and they've got these huge gaps in their ga ground planes underneath the transmission lines, uh, almost as as severe as I've pictured here. Um, in that case. When we, uh, when we do that, if we go back and look at our performance in terms of the, uh, the model error, you can see that the model error gets extreme. It's still at lower frequencies, it may look like a nice microstrip line, but as we go up, the error really, really departs quite a bit from the, um, the error that we saw for the other cases. And if we look at the match that we get for this, uh, you can see that it really does not behave very well like a, our 50 ohm lines or our lines that are near to 50 ohms where we had good propagation, nearly 50 ohm match. Um, depending upon the accuracy that we need, it, it might be sufficient to use those split planes um, or it's sufficient to use the Emlin model um, to model those things. But here with that huge gap, it, it really does not look like a 50 ohm line. The reason for this is that the current return path is struggling to find its way back to that uh, voltage source driving pin one. The, uh, the distance, the electrical distance that current has to travel is extreme because there's no clear path on that ground plane and has to seek an alternate method for the current to return. Uh, so this is an example of how you can use uh, EM analysis. Axiom's very fast. It takes a few seconds to do this sort of line. If you need to go to higher levels of complexity, uh, you can uh, continue to use Axiom. You may be able to use ACE if the ground planes are clearly defined or if you can model the ground planes as, uh, as lines or very, very wide lines, or you can use ACE in some extreme cases. But uh, this is what you need to be concerned with if you want to run these uh, traces at gigahertz frequencies. Where is my current return path? Uh, am I modeling it accurately? Or am, are the circuit models that I'm using providing that level of modeling? Um, and are my ground planes adequately designed to handle this sort of uh, uh, extreme performance and frequency? If you'd like more questions about how to use Axiom, the AWR design environment, uh, TX line, or some of the other features that I've mentioned, please go to the AWR TV website and look for videos on the related subjects. You can also go to the awrcorp.com website, look for articles. Uh, you can explore the knowledge base. And if you have more questions after that, I encourage you to contact your AWR sales professional.